Welcome back, everybody, to another Pittsburgh Weishwartz deck profile. Fancy. As you can tell, I've been doing a lot of reading lately. From my very large diction and exquisite vocabulary, <laughs> I'm <laughs> going to be walking you through one of my spicy favorites. Um, this cool Revue Starlight deck. I put a lot of work into this one, and um, after you blew me up in the uh, Red Slime review, Carmen, about level 2 combos, I figured it'd be appropriate to show off a deck with a level 2 combo to all the good people out there. Did I? I, I don't remember You were probably very Red. drunk at that yeah, point. I don't remember did. the end of Red very much. I, I really liked that one card that stock charged you. It was the one Wolf Girl. Oh, I don't know. Easy. okay, yeah. I don't know. But anyway, let's uh let's hop right into it, I guess. All right. Um, starting off at level zero, I don't think we've done a review profile on this channel yet, have we? Or did we? Uh, do I, I think we did. We might have done one of Billy's decks. I think we did something a lot more. Eight standard. wind. I think we did I, eight wind. I know you've been messing with this list, like this set, for a while. Mm -hmm. so. a, a lot of the level zeros are pretty uh, standard, though, in review Starlight. Um, starting off, there's three copies of Fighting Spirit Futaba. She is a 4k if she's in your middle row and gets an extra soul. So a really good card to play down in the early game. There's really not many good outs to her. And um, always nice to have an on-demand two soul attacker at any point in the game. Um, and then two copies of Stage Girl Summer Hikari. Um, she's just a normal, normal runner. Free runner. Um, runners are pretty good at level zero, but I mostly have her there for the red fix. Um, yeah. But it, you know, I'm, I'm not never never sad to run a runner. Yeah, just five field that. pluses. Had to scooter red just for the color, but understandable. Yeah, not really a big deal. Uh, On to the more important stuff at level zero, I guess. Uh, four copies of Karen. I think this is like a staple in any Revue Starlight deck. Um, it is a graveyard Ricky. Uh, so when you play it, you can pay one and clock yourself to a. Uh, Take a level one or lower character from your waiting room back to your hand. Um, I think this is probably the best Ricky in in English for sure. Maybe even in the entire game. I, I like it a lot because of the, the best uh, second salvage effect on Ricky. it. Yeah, it's the best salvage Ricky for sure. Uh, combined with the second effect on the card, which lets you look at the top card of your deck when you play it and put it into your graveyard or just keep it on top of your deck. Um, something to keep in mind with um, a lot of the, mainly the level zeros in Revy Starlight is a lot of them will have two different auto effects and you can resolve them in whatever order you want. I'm a complete show for that and I say it every video, but it, it really, really does matter here and you'll see why with the next couple cards. But um, the, the Karen Ricky is really nice because Rickies are always good and it has long game value the whole way through because it, it's always good to look at an extra card and be able to change it, especially leading into our top end that we're running. Um, next card is Stage Girl, Claudine Saijo. She also has two effects when you play her that you can resolve in any order. The first one looks at the top card of your deck, and if it's a character, adds it to your hand and you discard. Uh, the second ability is Mill Two Cards, and if there's a climax, she gets 3,000 power. Um, really useful for the, the filter effect, and it's really good um, with the next two cards we're going to talk about, which allow you to look at the top card of your deck. Uh, the Brainstormer for the deck is the level 0 Juna. She is a Rest Self Search Brainstormer. And at the beginning of your Climax phase, you get a look at the top card of your deck. You That's know just your every, trigger every turn. Every, every turn you get a look at the top card of your deck going into Climax step. Um, it's kind of tricky to remember to do this sometimes. Maybe like put a dice on top of your deck to remind yourself or something. But you probably will already know the top card of your deck already because of effects like Karen and Giraffe, which is the next card we'll talk about, which let you look at the top card of your deck quite frequently through your turn. Yeah, this is um, Scry Till You Die, basically. Sort of that. It's not guess, as all-in. So, yeah. It's not as all-in as, I guess, some of the versions that run standby, but it's still a really powerful package. Mm-hmm. Um... And then the last level zero, uh, these are my babies. These beauties are signed by my good teammates, Carmen and Brian. 
the the giraffe card. What was um, the story behind this? Because I remember you hated giraffe, and we were like, I, if I you ever run giraffe. giraffe, we're gonna sign it, and you got to use these ones if you ever play it. It it was something like that, and if you go back and watch our review Starlight set review back. <laughs> Back from way back when we started, I absolutely hated this card. I think I gave it an F. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think you gave it an F. But uh, after playing with the card, in context of Revue Starlight, I actually like this card a whole lot. Um, it, you can pay two and rest it to search your deck for a character and add it to your hand. Um, I, I thought that would be like too expensive of a cost to pay to be practical, but actually it's quite affordable in the grand scheme of things. You really only might need to do it a couple times. Um, the thing I really like with it, though, is the uh, first effect. Whenever you play a character, you get a look at the top card of your deck and put it back. Um, it's pretty disgusting when you combine that with... If you want to go back to the last slide for a second, Carmen. Sure. The, uh, the Karen, either the Karen or the Claudine, which both have multiple enter effects that deal with the top card of your deck. You can resolve these in whatever order you like. You can... With the Claudine especially, it's pretty cheeky. You can, like... If you know the top card of your deck already and you know it's a character, you can like draw it and discard it and mill two cards and then look at the top card with giraffe. Or like mm-hmm. make sure you're gonna hit a clean trigger with your uh Karen Ricky. So like play Karen, look at the top card of your deck off of giraffe. You know, if it's clean you can then, you know, clock it and do the Ricky effect, and mm-hmm. then you get a scry on top of it. So you can sequence and, them however is most beneficial to you every single time, because they all stack with giraffe and trigger at the same time. Mm-hmm. And there's there's never like one correct way to always do it. It's it's very contextual in the in the circumstance you're in. It, it might be better to resolve a different effect first. Mm-hmm. But but these two cards combined with giraffe make for some very interesting lines of play you can take. Um, moving on to level ones, this stuff's. Admittedly, a lot less interesting. Um, we got uh, four copies of Claudine. She is basically just Union from uh, Konosuba. She gets 1,500 power when you play her, so she shoots up to 6,000. And with Climax up to 7,000, on reverse, uh, blind stock the top card of your deck and reveal the top card. If it's level 1 or higher, you get to add it to your hand. Um, all the things you love and hate about Union. Yep. Um, it's, it's, it's great when you uh, add clean cards to your stock and can get the reverse and draw cards when you reveal level 1s, and it sucks when you don't. But if you can get two or three of these off, it probably will average out in your favor. The extra stock makes Giraffe a lot better, too. Like, just a pay 2. Like, if you know you have a Climax Barrier down there, it's a stock out, you have extra stock, so the stock overhead on a rest 2 search isn't that bad. Unfortunately, this doesn't keep its power cross turn. I think that's the the big thing yeah, with every union that came after union. They they don't give it power without some sort of like uh, like significant drawback. I think the only other one that holds power cross turn is the card capture Sakura one, but that's also off standby, and you also have to resonate with another card. I don't think they've had a power cross turn union since the original union. They're all sort of power on play or power on climax play. They're they're usually just like power on your turn, but you know it's still all right. It hit seven thousand when I needed to hit seven thousand, which is to get the reverse. Mm-hmm. Um, not much more to say there, I guess. Like like you were saying though, it definitely does make giraffe a lot less um painful to use. Yeah, especially like if I had it, I can like pay down stock beforehand to get an extra Claudine into my hand, which will then give me another card to combo with to get that stock back. Yeah, which is pretty nice. Um, next slide, we got, just to make sure we're on the same page here, you, yep. you have three cards on here, right? Yep. You have the event, okay. Because I know I was messing around with the list a little bit beforehand. Uh, three copies of the Mahiru. Uh, when you play her, she mills two cards from the top of your deck, and if you mill a Climax, you can discard a card and salvage a character. Um, so it's like, it's like a on-play drop search, but you don't actually have to drop the card unless the the effect hits, which is nice. You don't have to preemptively yeah, discard. Like a costless drop salvage. It's also a six five attacker too. Pretty uh really solid card. This is run at high counts pretty much every review list. It's like just a super solid card. The, yeah the it floor helps, it is helps really us, high. Helps us mill through the first deck is probably the best red fix I could potentially run. 
Um, and it, do it doesn't cost stock to do the filter effect, which is nice. Mm -hmm. I, we're a bit stock heavy at the higher end here. Uh, two copies of the 2K backup. Uh, this is more to protect our early play, but I, I guess we could use it to protect the Claudine if we needed to. Um, but like Carmen said earlier, she doesn't really sit big on defense, so it's mm -hmm. not that applicable. This is mostly there for red fix and for our early plays. And then two copies of the Mill 4 event. So look at up to four cards from your deck and choose a character, add it to your hand. The rest go to Graveyard. Um, specifically, the level one Claudine combo adds level one or higher cards to your hand, so it mm -hmm. can hit off of event cards, which is kind of the reason I wanted to play this card. Because this can essentially, this is, this is a card that Claudine will hit for you, and then you can just turn this card into any other card. It kind of lets you see more cards with the Claudine effect, essentially, and get whatever you need at that point in the game. It's also a good way to, like, not trip some of your other effects, I guess. Like, it's the one thing, so, I, and, you know, I shit on these events a lot. I sit on, I shit on the camera events a lot. Um, mm -hmm. But when you do have a full field um, and you still need to mill, that's where these are useful. Um, that's sort of a uh, that's a case that I always downplay. It doesn't come up that often, but it is uh, it is fine. And since all your other cards like hit on this, it's fine. Your, your level one combo hits on it. You don't have to worry about it. As long as it's not a liability there, I don't think it's too much of a problem. Yeah, it can be pretty nice, especially compared to some of the other like brainstorm mill cards or like the cigarette events. You can choose to stop whenever with this. Yeah. So even if you're at a pretty compressed deck, you can just look at one card and just cycle it. Yeah, just get rid of it. But that's it for level ones. Not super exciting. Just a lot of stock building of Claudine. On to level two. This is where we get interesting. We have our second book trigger, and the level two Juna combo. Um, on her own, Juna is a anti-change bomb, so if she gets reversed and her opponent is a higher level than your opponent's level, you can bottom deck that card. And the climax combo, when you play the book from your hand, and she's on your center stage, you can choose a level 1 or lower character in your opponent's back row and bottom deck it. Um, there's not too many effects in Weiss that allow you to just indiscriminately remove a card on your opponent's field let alone your opponent's back row. Um, a, a lot of bounce effects and just other effects in general that kill stuff will specifically say front row. So being able to interact with your opponent's back row is actually really cool. Um, the fact that it's a level 1 or lower character um, allows it to hit some relevant backups and assists at level 1 that you other ways might not be able to hit. So a lot of back row destruction effects in Weiss are level 0s only. Um, but it just gives you some nice incremental value in the mid-game, being able to interact with your opponent in a way that they're probably not uh, expecting to have to interact on that axis. Um, and the other nice thing about this combo, too, is that you just get to incidentally run four copies of a anti-change bomb in your deck, which is pretty neat. Yeah, I feel like the only other lists that sort of like do this where they run a ton of bombs are like uh, Bang Dream lists that are in green. They'll like run like three Himaris because that card gives you extra stock. So it's like kind of similar idea where it's like you're never going to have to deal with your opponent's early plays because you're just going to play this. But then you also have this climax combo that just destroys their back row. So you get to like, if your opponent's not prepared, might not be able to recover from a turn like this. Or they'll have to yeah. field garbage that you can crack back over. People have a bad habit of looking at, you know, underplayed cards. You know, like when you're playing Weiss, right? They just say, oh, tell me what it does when you play it. And they'll, you'll just like mill through like this card or something or add it to your hand. And they'll just be like, okay. Mm -hmm. And not know what it does. So if your opponent's an idiot, you can really get them with this. But <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe that's not the right word. If they're unattentive, you can kind of trip them up with this. but. Uh, I feel like uh, the top end I'm running is powerful enough, I guess, in the late game. Like, the, the off finisher in Revy Starlight's good enough that I can kind of afford to run another combo at level 2. And this just gives a lot of, like, mid-game value in the sense that you just get to run four anti-change bombs and you can start sniping their back row. 
And both of the effects are bottom deck, actually, too, which is really mm -hmm. nice. So if your opponent's um, in a weird deck state, too, you're, you get to put... Because this is on Climax play. So you put, Climax like... Play. If you do double, and you put two cards into the bottom of their deck, and say they have one card left in deck, now they go to three, right? So you're starting to stack clean damage. So you swing this in, it goes for two. It bottom decks an early play. So now you have your back that you've just gotten three clean damage, basically. Well, two guaranteed, and then one of one over refresh, like you had before. It gives you if you double this with one card in deck and an early play on field, it's two clean damage, plus a uh, swing over refresh, like you had before. Of course, mm -hmm. you can't control, it and you have the well, you have the ability to see your trigger. So, you know, because mm -hmm. you're you, rev you. Yeah, so you'll have full information of to be able to. See if you can get that perfect swing for two, or if it's better to just like swing in a different lane to get three. Now uh, that they have three cards in deck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely though. Unlike the uh, the level one combo where you're probably going to be trying to get two or three of it every time. You know, depending on the matchup. You know, if your opponent, you know, doesn't run early plays, let's say, or if, if they're not too invested in that strategy or don't really have a lot of cards sitting in their back row then this isn't the most essential combo to go for. And in those games, you can just prioritize uh, going for your early plays and just playing a more traditional game plan. Mm -hmm. Which we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, one, only one other card at level 2. Uh, we have the level 2 Kawako Assist. She uh, level assists for 500 times level and an additional 500 power to the center row, too. Um, I think you, this is why, like, the giraffes in the deck and, you know, Mm -hmm. The uh, another good reason to play the level zero uh, Kauriko, or not Kauriko, yeah. Kutaba. Um, I think this is probably the the best card in Revue Starlight, and I think if you're playing Revue Starlight, especially in English where you don't have the second set and everything, like this is the big draw to the set. Um, the third effect on the card allows you to interact with your opponent's clock during your opponent's main phase, and it just ruins any sort of clock condition your opponent has for their early play. So if you hit level two first and can drop this on your field in the back row, then if your opponent has any sort of early play, like if it's like Mirai Ticket in Love Live Sunshine, or um, I think in Konosuba, you need like Detonative Beam. Yeah, they're have still the playing Detonative in the clock. Beam. That one's kind of phased out, but there's still a lot of clock condition stuff. Goblin Slayer. Goblin with Slayer, that, yeah. With this. There's Those like a lot of ways tech. you can really trip up a lot of these higher tier decks that are relying on clock condition. All three of those decks we just mentioned were top tier decks. So, and they're also decks with enough compression, and if your opponent gets like one or two lucky cancels, they're they're decks that are going to enter into level two between two zero and two three. So the chances for them to like sack in those zero to three cards an extra copy of their clock condition are pretty low. So, like, the timing of this card, the way that games typically go, is really good for shutting these down. Um, the other effect that I think people overlook with this, too, is there's a little bit of, like, sack potential with it, too. Like, if you you, ha you build up all this stock with the Claudine combo, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just have so much stock and nothing to do with it. You can just, like... Even if they don't have, like, a clock condition, right? You can just say, all right, I'm going to pay out this climax that I triggered last turn or something. Mm -hmm. And, like, mess with your deck. And, like, maybe I'll put a climax into your clock. Oh, or you only have one, you have one card. card left in your deck and you know it's a climax? Uh, get that shit in your clock, please. Like, those situations where your opponent draws up and they have four cards in their deck. And, like, they're at 3-6 and they don't have a heal. Now they have two attacks. You know, just like garbage like that. Weird edge case plays. Yeah, like I've I've legitimately played games with this deck where like I'm sitting at, like me and my opponent are both at three six and my opponent's deck is like really, really thin and it's just like yeah, start of your turn I'll make you I'll take an extra card out of your deck and make you get closer to that refresh point that's gonna kill you. Yeah. Like an actual real play you can do. Maybe, you know, one in a hundred games, but definitely keep it in mind. Yeah, it's Let's, a big uh, reason to play yellow, for sure. Like, just splash enough yellow to play one of this. I think you have to if you're playing Revue. It's just too good of a card. And, like, the as Futaba... Long as, as long as LSS is one of the most popular decks in NA, 
and I don't know about other places. I know I know in Europe it's not as popular and stuff like that. Love Live Sunshine is like ludicrously popular um in NA. So as long as it's still strong, still popular, there's a reason to run this at one or two of in basically every list. And I guess against Love Live Sunshine as well, even if you don't hit level two first, then you still have the Junus to bottom deck their goes, which is kinda cool. Yeah. But let's uh let's wrap this wrap this bad boy up. Level threes, nice and clean. We got four copies of Mahiru, which is the early play. Two or less climax in waiting room, you look it up to X cards, add one to your hand. And the finisher of the deck, Karen. When you play her from your hand to your field, you get to reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a review character, burn your opponent for one. Um, exciting stuff, I know. But <laughs> it, it gets there. Especially with all your top checking effects with, you know, Giraffe and Claudine and especially like all your Ricky effects. Like if you ever just have like a salvage or a way to take a plus with this deck and you already have your Karens in your hand, you definitely want to be taking the level zero Karen. Because like yeah. what what I like to do with this deck going into my final turn is like make you know have ways to top check myself, you know, make sure it's a clean card. Um if I need to change it, I can use level zero Karen to mill it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you just slam down a bunch of these and burn your opponent, and, and then you pay just one. Try to, and then you just try to swing in and kill them. Well, then um, you can also, pay one and do it again. Yeah. Yeah, she also has like I like this card because it's kind of the best of both worlds. You have like an offensive and defensive effect on your finisher. Um, her second effect, uh, like a typical Karen, if she's attacked, she can pay one and go get a manager, <laughs> and uh, that's when she goes back to your hand. Um. <laughs> Deny. That was good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, she denies reverse, so if your opponent has their own on reverse combo and you somehow didn't get there, which I guess is kind of realistic because your your finisher is just a couple ping ones and then vanilla swing. So it, but even if you don't get there, you can pop her back to your hand, um, deny their on reverse combo, so she has some evasion. Um, and then if you have some stock left over, you can slam her down next turn, and you'll certainly get there that time. Um, and then I guess the really nice thing too is you can tap completely out for this. You can just pay all your stock for your Karens and then attack three times and then they'll all... You generate a stock on your attack and you can use that stock to pop her back to your hand. Yeah. Really, uh... I don't know. It's just a free burn. Free burn in main phase. Burn for one. It can kind of help you like see how much damage you need to do. Know if you need to go big or go small. Loses to memory, Snow. Unfortunate. Rest in pepperoni. Oh no. But that yeah. was kind of like the that was like the main theme behind this deck is I, I like this Karen and I know I gushed about it a lot during our set review that I, I liked how it was like a really good off finisher that could then pop back to your hand and prevent reverses. Mm-hmm. And it just seemed like if I want to go all in on this for a finisher, you know, it opens up some deck building space at level two, and I think it proves a point that um. You don't necessarily need a level three combo as long as you're able to have some sort of like top end at level three, be it like Musashi's or like burn on plays or something. And then if you can do something else valuable at level two, it can open up a lot of deck design space for you. Mm -hmm. This might not be the strongest review build you could play, but uh, it's definitely a lot of fun and it actually performed a lot better than I thought it would. It's one of my favorite decks to just blow out and play for sure. Yeah, the the back road nuking definitely catches people off guard. Like, and then it everything's so early play centric. You just remove everything. You just don't care. You you gotta love that feeling when you play against Brandon and he doesn't read any of your cards, and then you do this to him, and he's like, "Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> My ambushes are gone. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, union, and it, like, how am I supposed to play? <laughs> and that's a really that's a really good example. Any deck that crutches really hard on back row, um. This kind of takes this idea to the nth degree, and we've seen it like teched into even like super high profile, um, like top player decks, like Riaz famously with the Sasha. He he played the Sasha literally just to remove like Konosuba back row or like Rezero back row, like decks that really crutch on their brainstormers or back row pluses. A deck like this takes that idea to the nth degree where you're not only bombing out every single early play that hits the field, but you're also just nuking your opponent's entire back row setup from level one and earlier. So Lots and lots of incremental value in the mid-game. Yeah, definitely um, a super fun deck. 
Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, and hey, you get everyone everyone's favorite trigger. Book. Yeah, I was about to say eight of them. the only bad part is that you're running eight bull. <laughs> That's the worst part. We hey, do love hey, to read here. <laughs> hey, even if you draw, even if you draw book off of book, the the best play, right? Only mm-hmm. good players do that. You just get to slam it next turn and go for more damage. Yeah, broken damage wins games. That's something to remember. But yeah, looking at the overall list, uh, very clean. Uh, not a single one of in the deck. Two of are greater. Consistency. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty clean deck list, Andy. I like it. Thank you. It's definitely a lot more consistent than you know you might think just looking at it. Um, and if you you're looking at this deck list and you kind of like it but want to change a few cards to your preference, the uh, the level one mill four events you could definitely turn those into. Uh, Anything else you wanted, whether it be a couple more level zeros or maybe some uh, more level threes to push damage in the end game. The only thing that I think I would personally change, and I think some other people looking at this might have a similar idea, is uh, probably jam a couple healers in here somehow. Um, like anything. I'm not sure if the Maya or Claudine pieces, I know those are double R's or whatever, and this is kind of more on the budget end. Other than the Karens and the Karen Rickies, I think those are the expensive part here. Um. Yeah, just some sort of healer since you're kind of a slower. Listen, dude, like, every, everything in Revue's budget. Yeah, that's true. Everything in Revue's budget. Well, the whole set is dirt cheap, except for like the level zero. Counter. You have enough yellow to run the Nana um, healer from the TD, and like you're gonna have to have four of these Karens anyway, so you probably have those. Might be able to uh-huh. play with the the backup and mill four lineup to squeeze one or two of those in there and help you help you live another turn. You could, yeah, you definitely could squeeze some more. Squeeze a couple healers in there, if you like. Because this deck is trying to two-turn your opponent, so having a couple healers might be nice. Yeah, um, the other solid. thing I was messing around with was the 3-2 uh, event. The, uh, um, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. The one with like the, the letter or the piece of paper or whatever. You like yeah, mill cards event. and burn them equal number of souls just to get some extra like burn damage. to be like You can go for a level 3 healer if you want more defense, or go for like a burn event if you want some more offense. That card is pretty dank. But, but yeah, um, that's all I got to say about that. Um, thanks for watching, guys. If you uh, enjoyed the video or want to see more of this type of content, you know what to do. Um, last slide, we got all of our Discord that we're part of, Card Games Discord and Competitive Voice Schwartz. I think one of those is Burn One's Discord, right? Yeah, second one. Yeah, um, guys. that's where all the action happens. And Card Games Discord, if you want to get some... Uh, Get some webcam games or play some AMQ. Definitely check that out. And then all of our Twitters are at the bottom. Maybe I'll make my first debut tweet one of these days, but I know Carmen uses it a lot, and the others might. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anything else you want to say, Carmen? Uh, no, just like upcoming content stuff. We got uh, the Rush Rundowns. We're still doing those Mondays, Wednesdays, uh, and then Deck Tech just like this on Fridays. Three guaranteed days of content a week. We're going to keep that going as long as we possibly can. Um, we're kind of in like a crunch, get a bunch of stuff ready to go, especially with the Invitational, which um, I'll have information about that in the description of this video as well. Trying to make sure as many people who watch White Stuff on YouTube know about that. Um, the White Schwartz Invitational is currently ongoing. It's going to be from the middle of June all the way through uh, July. 32 players from all over the world. Going to be have a lot of stream games, uh, games with commentary, lots of good content, uh, lots of statistics from ENTCG, um, which is really, really cool stuff since we don't have a spring season. So that's going to be super fun. Uh, I'll be playing in that. Um, uh, Everyone type big ups, Carmen <laughs> Condolucci in the <laughs> comments. <laughs> yeah, just uh, I, I brought LSS. Um, Help our boy get to victory. Gonna see, gonna see how far I can go. I'm, I'm not too big on online stuff, online wise, but uh, we gotta get the content out there for those uh, those hungry the people. people. Um, I I really like commentary too. That's something I really take for granted. You know, with Magic is the you know really yeah. you know a lot lots of commentary they have. I, I really love the few times I see uh, Weiss have you know commentary on their tournament games. So I'm gonna really enjoy that part of it. Yeah, and all those uh, games will be archived and stuff too, so that should be fun for everybody to watch, everyone to watch. 
Uh, and it's that, like generally yeah. like 32 of like the it's like 32 of the best players, right? From yeah, well, well known and well ranking players for sure. Should be super super cool. Uh, in terms of other content, I think uh, what the Tomb of Nazarick is the next thing we have to look at. Um, I know we have a bunch mm -hmm. of local players that are very interested in that, so we're gonna have to get them on the get them on the cast. We'll get that going. Bring your uh, chips. Yeah, bring your chips. Uh, <laughs> um, other stuff. We have an idea for a um, another video that's sort of like a more meta, like competitive based video. Just sort of. Um, ooh, 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 yeah, don't spoil it. Don't spoil yeah, it. Yeah, not not no one. spoilers, but keep a lookout for that. That's going to be a cool one. I think it's something that a lot of people at like the um, a lot of newer players to like mid level or even like com like even very fiercely competitive players in the English meta. Um, will probably find pretty useful because it's uh, information that isn't easily available on one place for the most part. So that should be very cool. We're still working on that, getting that all together. It's really hard to find time with the invitational stuff and everything, but we're we're making do. So with that, I think we're done. Pittsburgh Weishwart signing off. We'll see you guys in all that new content.